I had a request for how you compute expected return and variance in using Excel. Now this is a good opportunity for me to clarify a couple of points in terms of how you compute expected return. Well, how you compute it depends on the data you're given. So in this case, we're given three different states of the world, recession, normal growth, and a boom period, and different probabilities of those states occurring, 25% for recession, 50% chance of normal growth, and a 25% chance of a boom period. And in those different states of the world, we expect A to get 10, have a 10% return if there's a recession, 12% if there's normal growth, and 17% if there's a boom period. So if we want to calculate the expected return for this, what we want to do is we want to multiply the probability times the state of the world occurring. So we're going to take a weighted average. And you've done weighted averages if you've gone to school and the professor says uh, that your midterm counts 30% and your final counts 70%. You don't just add the two scores up and divide by two because in that case you'd be weighting the midterm too little, I'm sorry, too much, and the final too little. You'd take 30% of your midterm grade and add it to 70% of your final exam grade. So in order to do this, we just want to multiply these together. So we want to multiply what's in cell B4 by what's in cell C4. Okay, so we get, that's the uh, probability we're in a recession times the return we get if we're in a recession. And we can copy this formula down. And in order to get the expected return here, we just add these up. So we can just go to our sum function and sum this up. And so the expected return here is 12.75%. How do we calculate the variance? Well, in the case of the variance, we want to look at the square deviation, the deviation from the mean, or I called it here R bar, multiplied by the probability of that state of the world occurring. So let's see if we can put that formula in here. And in Excel, you always have to start with an equal sign. So we're going to take B4, that's the probability that the first state occurs, times what's it, what return we get in that state, that's in C4, and we want to subtract out what's the average, okay, R bar, and that happens to be in D7, and I'm going to put a dollar sign in there because I'm going to copy the formula down and I want to lock that row, and I need to square it. So use that hat or caret key too, and that should square the terms. And this is what you get. Again, I can copy the formula down. And if I just sum this up, I get, in fact, I'm going to sum it up down here. Okay, so I'm going to say sum, and I'm going to sum from E4 to E6. And this is going to give me the variance. And if I want the standard deviation, I'm just going to take the square root of this. So this is equal to square root, SQRT, of what's in cell E10. So we're going to get that, and we can put this in percentage terms if we'd like. And you should use a couple of more decimal places. So the, so the expected return is 12.75%, and the standard deviation is 2.59%. What does that mean? That means if this were normally distributed, then you'd expect something like 66% of the return to be between plus and minus one standard deviation, 95% plus or minus two standard deviations. So two standard deviations would be a little more than 5%. So you would expect 95% of these values, if this were normally distributed, to be between somewhere around seven, seven and three quarter percent up to, let's say about 17 and three quarters percent. Okay, now 
let me let me do another example here. I've got the same example I had before, the return of A and the return of B, but now I'm going to try and calculate the the um, expected return and the variance for a portfolio consisting of both A and B. So I added an extra an extra um, set of returns here for A. And whatever you put in A, um, you don't put in B. So we're, everything has to be put into either A or B. So if you add up the weight in A and the weight in B, it should sum to 1. So I put in a number here for A, and what I did for B is I put in 1 minus what was in here. So I can change this number to 40%, and then this changes to 60, etc. So here, what's the return for the portfolio in the recession state of the world? It's going to be the weight in uh, the weight in A, which is in B2, times the return that you get in that state, which is in C6, plus the return you get, or the uh, weight in B, which is in B3, times the return you get for um, B in that state of the world, which is in D6. So we get 8.2%. That looks correct, right? It's somewhere between uh, 7 and 10%. And A is weighted... Um, less than B, so it should be a little bit closer to B than it is to, to A. If I made these 50-50, 50%, you can see it's halfway in between, right? So we'll go back to my previous example. Again, setting it up as a formula allows me to change these things. So now I'm going to copy this down. Oops, what did I do wrong? Let's see what I did wrong. I, I put some formula in incorrectly. Uh, let me see here. I have, oh, I didn't put in the weights. I didn't put in dollar signs for the weights. And so when I copied it down, it, uh, it changed the rows. So that messed up my calculation here. So sometimes you're gonna figure out that you made a mistake. You have to correct that. And let's see if I copy it back down. If this works now that looks that looks correct and so what's the expected return for this portfolio we just uh, we need to calculate this by looking at the probability times the return that each uh, that we'll get in each state of the world and then average that out so here we're going so we're doing the same thing we did in the previous example but now instead of just doing it for a probability times the return for A, it's going to be probability times the portfolio that consists of A and B. So that's, so the probability is in B6, and we're going to multiply by E6. And we'll just sum that up. Okay, we'll copy that down, and now we'll sum this up. And we get the expected return for the portfolio is 10.5%. Okay. Last thing we want to do is we want to calculate the variance, and then we can take the square root of that to get the standard deviation. So now we just we have to take we use the same formula we used before: probability that you're in the first state of the world, okay, in this case recession, times the square deviation between the value in that state and the average value or expected value. So let's see if we can't put that in. Probability is in B6. And I want to multiply that times what's in F6. I'm sorry, not F6, E6. Okay, I don't want the one that I multiplied the probability by. That was just to calculate the expected return. But the actual value we get in a recession, which is 8.2%, minus the expected value, which is in F9. Okay, again, I'm going to try and put in a dollar sign, so when I copy the cells down, it doesn't, uh, it locks the, the uh, row at row 9, and then I want to square that. And again, let me sum this up. 
Or let me copy this down. And then if I sum this up, G6 to G8, I get the variance. And if I want the standard deviation, I take the square root of this number. G, what's in G13. Okay, so the square root is this. Again, I can put it in percent terms. And again, you should use more decimal places. At least use a couple of places after the decimal. 1.45% is almost 1.5%. If you only use two decimal places, it'll round to 1%. Okay, so again, basically the same calculation we did previously, but you need to figure out what's the what's the return for the portfolio in each state of the world and then its expected return. And the way I set it up, I can change this, it'll redo my calculations. So if I had 30% in A, you can see that you're going to have a lower um, expected return, okay? It's going to change the variance, it's gonna lower the variance as well, okay? Makes, seems to make, uh, make some sense there. All right, if I made this 60% A, I get a higher expected return, and I get, I get um, a higher variance. Okay, the final case I'm going to do is the case where you have daily data, weekly data, monthly, or in this case, annual data. In this case, you calculate the expected return simply by adding up the observations and then dividing by the number of observations. So you add 6 plus 8 plus 9 plus 7 plus 12 plus 9 plus 7, and then divide by however many observations we have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you can use the function in Excel that says average. So you can tell it what to average, average these numbers. Or we can just sum them up. In fact, I'll sum them up so you can see exactly what I'm doing. B7 to B13, and then I'm going to divide by 7. So the expected return here, again, I'll put it in percent terms and add a couple extra decimal places, 8.29% for A. I can copy the formula over here to get the expected return for B, 8.86. And if I want to do a portfolio, I can do the Oh, let me calculate the, the expected return, or the variance for, I'll just do the variance for A, and then I'll do the variance for the portfolio. But let me do the variance for A. Now in this case, we don't have a probability to multiply by, and expand that. So I need the square deviation, this, so I wanna do A, 2010's observation, minus the average value, square it, right? And I want to do that for each one of these, these values. So let me see here. So if I do this equals what's in cell B7 minus what's in cell B14, and I'll put that dollar sign in to lock the cell, square it. And let me copy this all down. Okay, and then to get the variance, I should add all of these up and divide by n minus 1. Okay, you lose a degree of freedom when you calculate the expected return. So you don't divide by 7, you divide by 6. Now, you know, if you have a lot of observations, it doesn't make a lot of difference. If you divide by, if you had 1,000 observations, you divide by 1,000, you divide by 999, it's not going to change the value very much. But here you don't have many observations. So let's see, let's sum up from E7 to E13 and divide by 6. And this is what we get for the variance. And if we want the standard deviation, let me put the standard deviation down here, that's going to be the square root of what's in E14.
And again, let me put that in percent terms. Add a couple extra decimal places. You could also try and use the function. There's a standard deviation function. And let's see. Let's see if we get the same value. I'm not positive I will, but from B7 to B13, B, what did I do wrong? I did something wrong. Oh, standard, uh, let, me, let's, let me go back here. STD, oh, I didn't use the whole name here. So I wanted ST, this thing, STD, EV. Let's try that again from B7 to B13. And look, we get the same answer. Okay, I can, I can uh, change that to percent and then expand it a couple of decimal places. So we get the same answer if we use the CAND function. So you can see that they have divided by N minus 1, not N. Now, if you want to do it for a portfolio, so this column here, so we could calculate the standard deviation for B, but it's not necessary to do that. Let's just do the portfolio. To get the portfolio, here we have the weights. We need the returns for each uh, year, okay, the average. And so let's see, we're going to take what's in B1, B dollar sign 1, times the return that A gets, which is in B7, plus what the weight in B, which is in cell B2, times the return that B gets in 2010, which is in C7. And if I copy that down, I get the different returns in the different states of the world, right? You see this is an average of these two, this is an average of these two. And if I just copy this formula over here, I can get the expected return for the portfolio, which is 8.71%. It kind of makes sense, right? Somewhere between the re average return of A and the average return of B. And again, if I want to calculate the, ex the standard deviation and the variance, I just do the same thing I did before. I take the value of the portfolio, which is in cell D7 minus its expected value, which is in D14, square it, copy these values down. And if I want the, let me put the variance here. I should have put a space here, make it easier to see. I'm just going to sum this up. So I'm going to sum up from G7 to G13. And I'm going to divide by N minus 1, so that's 6. So that's the variance, and the standard deviation is just going to be the st standard deviation of what's in G15. Whoops, I did something wrong. So let me go back here. G15. I'm sorry, I don't want the standard deviation of that. I want the square root of that. So let's take the square root of what's in G15. All right, there we go. And again, I can put it in percent terms, increase the number of decimal places. Let's see if we got the same number here. If I use the standard deviation function, and I want to go from D7 to D13, I get the same number. Right? If I just reduce the number of decimal places, it'll round off to 5.25. So how you calculate expected return and standard deviation depends on whether you're given uh, time data, data over time, a time series. 
So these are all equally weighted. So calculating the expected return, you just add up the values and divide by the number of observations. Or in this case, you're given states of the world. You have to calculate these differently by multiplying the probability of the state occurring times the return you get in that state. So I hope that that's helpful and that clarifies it. And um, Excel is a really good way to do the calculations. It makes it much simpler. You don't have to do all the uh, multiplying and squaring, etc.